Greetings everyone, my name is Jonathan and uh, today I am doing my first video on the post-divorce existence for men. Um, I'm doing this video because uh, I've looked on YouTube and frankly I haven't really found that many videos that really kind of address certain problems that you will inevitably face. Um, and the difficulties of a post-divorce existence. Uh, I'm not a psychologist, I'm just a regular person who uh, in 2017 uh, I moved back to the United States with my then wife um, from China. Uh, we were both living in China. I've been living in China for almost 20 years total, but 16 years that stretch and uh, moved to a remote town known as Santa Fe, New Mexico. Anyway, long story short, very quickly after we moved back to the United States, uh, the relationship started to sour uh, very intensely. And uh, with regards to that, then basically we quickly separated and uh, a divorce, a no contest divorce was uh, initiated and signed off on by the judge in October of the same year. So basically six months after we moved back, we were divorced. And that's after being together for about eight years, uh, as, sorry, together as a, as a married couple for eight years, but being together for 16 years. So, um, Today, I mean, I'm going to talk about things out of out of order here. Um, but one of the topics that I thought was actually quite interesting and quite useful, um, that I think is will be useful for guys who are going through this, and it can apply to women as well. Um, but since I'm a guy, I'm kind of talking to guys as to what you can experience. Um, it's basically besides the fact. So when people say like that, divorce rips through society, the fabric of society. I never quite understood that statement, really what it meant. Um, you know, I saw people on Oprah, I saw people on a variety of talk shows talking about divorce, and I always thought it really didn't apply to me because I never experienced it and I never thought I would. And I think most people never think that they're going to experience divorce, but when it comes, uh, it's uh, it's an interesting thing that happens. So when I think about how it rips through society, instead of taking that kind of rather wide approach, I look at things and say, well, how did it rip through the people around me? And that's an interesting story because the way I see it is that um, divorce causes people to break down into kind of tribal factions. So, you know, you have the friends that you brought into the relationship. So I have my friends, you know, a lot of them in the United States, a few in China, and she had her friends. And then we have the common friends that we built, uh, you know, among uh, after our relationship had, had, um, had kind of become stable, you know, uh, you know, we, we found our own friends. So there are those people that, <clears throat> that came after we were a couple. And when divorce happens, there's a lot of, he said, inevitable, he said, she said kind of stuff. And you will find more often than not, at least it's been the case for me, is that people break down into factions. There are a lot of people who were your original friends who remain your original friends and, you know, say, hey, you know, I'm your friend, Jonathan. You know, it was a shitty thing that she did to you, all that kind of stuff. And they, they remain your friend and they, they are, for better or for worse, they're very judgmental about the other person without really hearing all the facts. Because as we know, Divorce is not 100% just a one-way street. You know, obviously it takes two to tango and it takes two to have a marriage. And a marriage breaks down because of a variety of reasons. It can be more one person's fault, less the other person's fault. But everybody has their own issues there. So 
you know, her friends remain her friends. And, you know, what what's difficult about this um, is that you feel judged in this process because on both sides, people have made efforts to become both of your friends. And I'm sure it's hard for those people, some of those people at least, for some it's easy. It's just like, I never liked her or I never liked him and it breaks down like that. But for most um, situations, it's, it's, it's sad that it has to end that way. And that the friendships that you, you think you have in a, in a marriage sometimes can are just illusory because you know they they never seem to cross over to that kind of I'm a friend of both of you I'm a friend to you because I was a friend to her is more like it and when that ends uh, it can be dramatic and it can be sad because inevitably I became friends with a lot of the people that you know my wife was friends with my ex-wife and um and when that goes away it's a very difficult thing to accept you know that they just stop contacting you or they stop seems like they stop caring about you and it may or may not be the case i mean a lot of people choose not to get involved in this in this sort of stuff because it's it's uncomfortable it's uncomfortable for them to to think about divorce because many of these people are in relationships themselves and ultimately when they're in relationships you know it can cause unsettled feelings and maybe you know even spur them on to start examining their own relationships and so there are people who run as far away as possible when there's a divorce in their friendship circle there are those people also, though, that that run towards danger, that are there to try and help you. I have a few of those friends, and that's the other type of friend that I think is incredibly important here that, that needs to be described. And that's that's the friends that are both of your friends and still care about both of you, regardless of what has happened. You know, there's no he said, she said stuff with them. They say... Hey, Jonathan, I was her friend, I'm your friend, and I'm going to stay that way, you know, and that is an incredibly rare person to have in your life. Those people are, are, I, I respect them immensely, you know, and to be honest with you, you know, I told the people in my life, the friends in my life who were, you know, kind of like, oh, you know, she's, she was no good, you know, all that kind of stuff, these kind of things. I said to them, I said, listen, my ex-wife cared about you guys and you guys cared about her. There's no reason why that should stop. I'm not the kind of person who's vindictive and who wants like, oh, you know, listen, all my friends need to support me and that's it. Basically, you know, hey, you know, if I say she's, you know, an awful person, you have to believe that. I mean... You can listen to my story and you can also kind of give me advice and you can also say, I don't like that aspect of her, but we all have bad aspects and it doesn't mean you can't still be friends with a person that you seem to have found common ground with. And that's why I take, you know, I took great pains to try and tell my friends at various points, you can still be friends with my ex-wife. It doesn't hurt me. Some people feel out of loyalty that they must be friends with one and, and disregard the other. It's like, that's not how this life works. And it's so childish in many ways. You say, I mean, we're all adults here, at least one hopes so. And it's like, hey, you know, if you found friendship, even in the enemy camp, you know, I term it enemy camp, they, they see it sometimes in enemy camp. It's like, then so be it. You know, that's, a, that's, that's an okay thing. And that's why when I go back to it and I say um, that divorce has a way of ripping through society and ripping through your friendship circle, that's probably one of the hardest aspects of, of this post-divorce existence is that it's the unwinding of all these friendships and the burning of these connections and 
that's sad to have that, you know, appear or manifest itself in your life. And I say to myself, well, a lot of these people are in China, they're Chinese, and they have different culture, and maybe they don't want to get involved, or maybe they just, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and a few friends have suggested, you know, don't take it too seriously, I'm sure they still like you, it's just that they don't know what to say, etc., and maybe that's the case, you know, but I have had a few very close friends on both sides of the aisle, so to speak, that have, like, reached out to me, and, you know, in times of, uh, desperation, you know, where I hit rock bottom, you know, uh, you know, basically those people came through. And so I do realize that, the, that sometimes some of the friends at key points will come, come forward for you. But anyway, I mean, ultimately, you know, that's, that's what I really wanted to say in the, in this, in this kind of first, like video about the post-divorce existence for men is that expect that it's going to be rough, you know, for dealing with the the uh, dissolution of your marriage, but also the dissolution of everything that goes along with it, the the, the friendships. And uh, but but know this, and this is not me being Pollyannish about it. It's like know this that you know you will survive it, and you know it's it's the whole thing is a learning process. You know, and it's a grieving process and no one can really, you know, say, oh, you know, six months is enough time or a year is enough time. I'm, I'm, I'm almost now two years into this process, two years since I moved back and basically a year and six months since I got divorced. And, um, and yeah, and only recently have I started to actually feel better about my existence. It takes time. And you don't beat yourself up about it. You know, if you if you feel sad, you feel sad. If you feel happy, you feel happy. It's like you've got to ride the wave of emotions in order to be able to ride out of trouble, out of harm's way. You know, the worst thing is to be mired in sadness, and sometimes it can seem rather bleak. Um, I'm not the kind of person who who can easily just go on to, like, you know, quickly on to another relationship because... I've had to think about all these things. And I think that, um, you know, you will find people saying, oh, all you need to do is to find somebody else and that will solve your problems. And I'm like, that's not going to solve the problems. I'm, I'm not going to get into another relationship until I find, you know, I'm at peace with myself and have rebuilt my existence in a way that I feel satisfied with. You say, hey, Jonathan, maybe that will never happen. <laughs> so be it. Maybe it will never happen. But, you know, I have to believe one thing, which is that when you start this journey, which, you know, it is a journey going through divorce, that one day you will walk through and you will become stronger for it. You know, and, and, I, and I feel like I am getting stronger. And that is why I think... I'm going to be making a series of videos about the post-divorce existence in the hopes, in the hope, sorry, that I can help somebody out there who's also going through a similar situation. So uh, let me know if you guys are interested in this and uh, leave any comments down below. I look forward to interacting with anybody who uh, you know, has any questions or, t you know, is going through something, I'll be happy to like, uh, respond to you. But anyway, um, that's it for today. And I hope all of you have a great day and, uh, and that you stay tuned for more videos from me. All right. I'll talk to you soon.